Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab. Uh, that was the sound of the Moog Mother 32. Now, the Moog Mother 32 is one of those things that got everybody super excited when it was first announced last year. And what is it? Well, it's a little desktop synthesizer uh, with Eurorack format. You can use it like this, which is uh, with its lovely wooden end cheeks. Uh, it's got a MIDI input, which is what I'll control it from uh, for the time being. So I can plug that straight in and play it straight from my MIDI keyboards. But it's also got this multi-point patch bay, which they've kept away from the knobs, so you don't end up with leads all over it. But this will fit in a Eurorack case format. It's also got, like I say, this little one octave keyboard and a 32 step sequencer. So this is the first time that Moog have entered the Eurorack format. You have to take the front panel off and remove the rest of the box. Uh, speaking of the box, we've got an audio output and a 12 volt DC input. But once you've taken it apart, what you would then do is use your usual ribbon connector from your Eurorack case to plug in. That would provide the power that you need. So coming back to the unit, the structure is fairly simple. We've got a single VCO, which does square and sawtooth, uh, an LFO, which does square and triangle, a ladder filter, 24 dB switchable between low pass and high pass, which is resonant. This is Moog, classic Moog lagger filter, uh, ADSR uh, with a switchable sustain portion, and then a voltage control mixer and an envelope depth, and then volume out. And plus, we've got all of these connections here, which give us the patch points. As I said before, uh, we've also got a uh, MIDI input, which, which also talks directly to the synthesizer and also allows you to map certain MIDI controls via a, a single assignable output point on the patch bay. That's actually quite nifty because that assignable patch point means that through firmware updates they can have it do lots of different things. It's currently got a number of functions. Anyway, let's take a listen to a voice. Starting with a sawtooth. It's got a nice bit of buzz. It's got a good range on it. Let's take a listen to the square wave. Which is a uh, heart pulse width, variable pulse width, gives you quite a lot of tonal variation, obviously we can modulate this, which will be pleased to know. Then moving on to the filter, the filter is actually quite uh, interesting, it does have that same brassy quality, though it doesn't have the ability to drive. We don't do that thing where you can, on the, certainly on the Sub 37 and other MOOCs of the size where you can drive it. That's pretty much it. So when you bring in that resonance, you do lose a lot of sub frequencies apart from when you're going right down. But you do get this lovely. Smooth Moog harmonics, and then of course we've got the low pass, the, the high pass filter. Which again, when you add those harmonics, you get those lovely. Those lovely sing-song harmonics that high pass filter. It does seem to let quite a lot of stuff through. I don't know if that's a 24 dB high pass. It sounds like it might be a 12. One thing that is actually pretty cool about the uh, LFO as well, uh, we're in triangle wave. If I go into to, uh, frequency mode, it's got a very high range. also down to low as well. So that's quite nice in terms of getting cross mod and things. And there's also a little trick, which even though this is only a single VCO synthesizer, you can actually use that LFO as another VCO, although over limited tracking. Let me show you. Uh, before I do that though, I'm just gonna plug the keyboard into the filter cutoff just to show you that it is possible to actually play the filter. I'm gonna plug something into the external audio and then move it right over and we'll go into So yes, it is possible to play the filter tracking without the oscillator in there at all. Right, so 
let's get the VCO going on the LFO here. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I take the keyboard output and I'm going to go into the VC mix. Now the VC mix is a voltage control mixer that gives you one and two sources and allows you to modulate the blend between them. So it can be used in an attenuator as well, which is actually quite handy in a system like this. So I'm going to go from the keyboard output into the mix input, then from the VC mix output into the LFO rate. Then from the LFO, I'm going to take the square wave out and come into the external audio. Now, let's take the LFO frequency up. Now, because I'm slightly attenuating it via the VC mix here, it gives me fairly decent tracking across a couple of octaves. Now, if I bring the LFO and the I can blend between the two. Similarly, uh, if I wanted to bring in, say, the VCO amount, let's try on pulse width. It'd be quite nice to beat voltage control that as well. But that's one of the things that you can't do on this. But that, you can see that it's possible to kind of use it certainly across limited range. You, once you go up too high on the keyboard, because it's an LFO, not a VCO, the tracking starts to go. But certainly I think they say below 320 hertz, it starts to, uh, it, it's much more realist, uh, reliable on the tracking, so you can use it as a sort of two oscillator bass synth. So let's take a look at the sequencer. We've got a 32 step, 303 style sequence here. And it's all right, we can tell it's 32 steps because this indicator here tells us which step we're at. One, two, three, four. So four lots of eight. So if I want to edit, say, the last step of the last set of eight, I press shift and go. Now let's say I want to maybe add a slide. I come back out to step mode and that will be sliding at the global slide amount. Now say for instance I, I fancy doing a bit of uh, uh, a swing, and let's swing this up a little bit. So I press shift and then I turn this the gate knob and I get a bit more swing. That's a bit more groovy. Now let's get some other things going on. Oh, while we're at it, let's go back to my step eight. I fancy doing something else. There's a thing called ratchet which basically lets me add repeat steps to a step of a sequencer. So I've added four there. Three. Now if I'm in just basic step mode, I can double this up. So I can add repeats, but I can program that per step. So anyway, let's um, mess around a little bit. Now there's one thing that I've done here, which if I take the triangle of the LFO out, and I plug that into the mix CV. Now what's actually happening here is the LFO is modulating this frequency. So I've got this little bit of white noise groove going on. Which is pretty cool. Now there's another thing that I discovered as well, which is if I take the VC mix, which is the output of this mix between one and two here, without anything going into it, then I've essentially got a voltage generator. So I could plug this into my VCA input, it means I could boost the amount of gain coming out. So I can start to clip it if I really want to get a bit funky with that. But that's nice and useful. And additionally, while we're at it, let's do uh, something else here. Let's take the VCO pulse width out and put that into the external audio. Now, 
now what we're getting is a pulse width wave and a triangle wave being modulated. So there's quite a lot of stuff you could do there with the sequencer. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that you can transpose in real time, either via a MIDI keyboard, or using the onboard one octave keyboard. So the sequencer is fine. The one thing you can't do in it is record anything in real time. It all has to be step based. And you can either take the input from an external MIDI source or you can use the inbuilt MIDI keyboard. Right, so I'm going to go into step mode. Uh, let's select a pattern. I'm going to go pattern eight. Remember that each bank of patterns, of which there are eight, have got eight in, so eight, eight, 64 patterns in total. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go shift and run, and that gets me into step record. So now, I'm just going to play the various notes. Now, when I hit go, my pattern is recording. Pretty straightforward. Then, if I want to edit all of this, what I can do now is I stop, I go into step mode. So now these are all the steps, which I can switch steps on and off. Uh, I can now shift and select a note in the pattern and I can change the note of that via the keyboard or via MIDI. So now if I pray, if I go back to step mode, so now my step is there. So pretty straightforward, but it's still step pattern mode, which, you know, with a keyboard of this size and all of that different mode switching can be a little fiddly. So quite a lot of smart little design things going on there, and I think that's a testament to the engineers. I'm pretty sure that Steve Dunnington and Amos Gaines have both had quite a lot to do with the design of this, and what they do is brilliant, and they are very smart cookies. It would have been nice perhaps to be able to decouple the sequencer from the synth engine so that we could output the gate and CV to either uh, use it to, tr uh, to, to modulate various parameters internally or externally. And I have heard that there may be a move afoot to allow this to happen because with the, because with the assignable output, it's possible to program this in firmware to output different things. As it stands, we've got the output could be accent, sequencer clock, which is useful for driving the tempo of an external sequencer, clock divided by two, clock divided by four, sequencer ramp step, which what that does is output a ramp wave over the entire length of the existing sequence. We've also got a saw, a triangle and random outputs uh, to go into a special mode. Now, if I remember correctly, it's uh, accent, shift, set end and eight. And now I'm in the assign mode. So at the moment it's uh, outputting accent. If I want to go to uh, random, it's parameter eight. So if I now take the assign output and put that into the VCF and hit go on the sequencers, you can hear that it's driving a bit of random. Now if I want to change the wave, we've got a triangle. You can hear there's stepping going on there because that's actually just making and that's a saw tooth. So some cool extra features there. Uh, additionally, we can map MIDI incoming velocity to the sign output. We can map uh, MIDI channel pressure, so after touch, pitch bend, MIDI CC 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 4 and 7. So that allows us to take incoming MIDI and output as CV. And this is going to be useful either for controlling the Mother 32 or perhaps other uh, modular equipment and that's quite cool because if you think you start with something like this it's got the MIDI CV so you can play it directly from your MIDI keyboard and then you've got a gateway to this other kind of world of modular and for me that's what makes the Mother 32 so interesting because it can integrate with other Eurorack gear very easily it's also a standalone side of thing 
And for the price, I think it's actually quite reasonable because Moog is generally seen as quite a premium brand. Uh, in the UK, it's about £500. In the US, it's $599. So uh, obviously the dollar's quite strong at the moment. So the parity, we're getting close to parity there. And it seems like actually that's quite a reasonable price for a single voice with all of this modular uh, possibility and all that extra routing. The only downside for me really is the way the sequencer operates. I do find it kind of quite fiddly and unintuitive, but I'm not really a step sequencer kind of guy. Um, perhaps other step sequencers I have had uh, uh, exposure to are even more complicated, so I suppose that's a blessing. Of course, uh, it's possible to accessorize. Over here, uh, we've got, I grab this, we've got the racking system, which allows us to rack up uh, up to three year, uh, Moog Mother 32s. It's also possible to get a dual case one. These are just little bits of metal that you screw on. It's very easy to fix. Uh, what I'll probably do is play out a little bit of a composition uh, using all three of these to show a little bit of the possibilities. So overall, I have to say, I think the Mother 32 is actually a pretty good buy. If you want to get into that kind of modular world with a self-contained unit, maybe build from there, you don't want to get into the expense of a case just yet, then it's a pretty good place to start. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Don't forget, subscribe.